Okay, so yesterday I loaded up that new Venture 5600 out of my truck. Now, luckily, uh, I was smart and I put a rag in it and I strapped it down and all that stuff because go figure, I'm like, you know, the one day I was, oh yeah, the one day it rains is the day that I have this transmission out. So lucky me. So I just got all the parts ordered. Uh, we're going to be picking up. I uh, just waiting on the pinion seal. Um, we got all six quarts of Pennzoil Synchro Mesh on order. And then we got the reverse light bulbs and there was something. Oh, and the drain plug, the gasket. All right, so letting this thing sit overnight. Yeah, see there's a nice little puddle right there. And I cleaned all that off. So you definitely need a pinion. I went and ordered one pinion seal. And then this is all the oil that dripped overnight from the drain bolt. So we gotta replace that too. Like I said, got that. Fluid is on order. I should be here in a little bit. Here's what we got going on. <sighs> Luckily this time I have an engine crane. I'll be able to just pop this thing back out. Make it super easy for me. And like I said, I put a rag over it so nothing got in it. I don't know how much these straps were really... This one was just to keep that in, but I don't think the strap was really doing much. So... I think what we're going to do is use my old clutch, but since the discs are the same, I think what we're going to do is we're going to use the original disc. So this disc in here with that clutch, because that starter's mated for that one. Um, this one I don't like because of the way that these are. So we're just going to make sure everything works. The only thing I'm going to use, reuse out of all this stuff is just the disc because this disc is in a lot better shape than mine. Mine's about all gone, so I want to make sure that he has a good experience, especially after we put the tuner on it. Uh, we're going to do a level 2 Edge CTS-2 tune. Um, I'm seeing a lot of bad reviews on the Edge CTS-3, so I told him just to get the 2. We got a boost fooler coming. Uh, the truck is studded, so realistically 35, 40 pounds of boost on a tow tune this thing will do great all right we got all of the stuff over here transmission is down a little sketchy but it's all right so now i can start cleaning out the back of the dakota this thing was like down to here but just got to clean all my tools out of the back move this thing over we get to pull out our new trans jack that i just got hopefully it fits this thing we're going to have to unscrew that. Hopefully that comes off easily. And then we'll use the ratchet strap method to kind of get it up in the air. And then we'll put the trans jack both underneath of it. So this guy does not want to come out. I've got the tools there. And it is just shredding my shit. So we're going to take a break from that. And I'm just going to go ahead and install the trans. Because I feel like installing a transmission is a lot easier than changing out a rear pinion seal. So before this goes back in, I'm going to grease all the U-joints. Make sure that's all taken care of and good. It'd also be nice. I don't have to replace this uh, top seal up here either since we're uh, not reusing it. But yeah, that's um, it's pretty torn up. So I got the adapter plate and the starter in. Um, I'm trying to do some strategic stuff right here. So here's your a flywheel. Obviously, I can clean this shit off and whatnot. But the pilot bearing is shot. And I don't have an extra one for that one. But I was thinking, since this clutch is all right, which how is this one? This one, that one has a normal pilot bearing, but look, it's gone. So it seems like those don't hold up. So if I can give him the best pilot bearing, which would be this one, I'm going to hold this flywheel up. I'm going to try to reuse this clutch and see if it will work. Uh, with the the NV5600. So first I got to bolt that up, make sure the starter is going to clear. Then I'll put this up here. I need to make sure that these, let's do some calculations here, just to make sure that the input shafts on everything are exactly the same. So let's just check this out. I'm going to clean this stuff up before I put it on, but I do want to check it. Okay, so input shaft on the NV and the G56 are both the same, which I, I figured they were, but, you know, it does not hurt to check. Especially because 
the older style NV5600s, they had a small input shaft, I guess. So that was weird. But now, see, this, I don't know if this um, surface is physically just bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and check and make sure that if I bolt up this other flywheel here, that it's going to work. Because this one here, you can see the teeth on this one. So I, I really just think that the surface is smaller, which is fine. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to try to reuse this one if possible. Because, I mean, it's still in decent shape. Like, there's a lot of meat left on this one compared to the other clutch. Like, I would have wanted to use my other clutch because it was a lot newer. It's in better shape. I've, this sat in the rain last night. But, like, that clutch is a lot cleaner. But we're running out of friction material. So that clutch might go in the garbage. That was my O'Reilly's clutch, and that thing was holding on for dear life. I got some good miles out of that. But, especially for 250 bucks. But... I think we're going to, I think that's what we're going to do because this bearing is a lot better. And every time you put the transmissions in, like you can see that one there, that pilot bearing is completely gone. So they don't hold up like these ones do. So I'd rather just toss that one. That makes sense to me. All right. So change of plans. I wanted to make sure this swap was going to work a hundred percent. So what I'm realizing the, for the G56, it has this uh, adapter plate that does not have like a spacing in it. So I made sure that when we, since we're gonna do this, um, I wanna make sure that everything's gonna work out. So I went and grabbed the adapter plate for my truck that is already an NV5600. Now, the difference is, even though this one has this bearing here, which it is a little crunchy, so we have kind of changed our mind on some things. It's a little crunchy. It's a beefier bearing, but it's definitely a little crunchy on the inside. These have that little spacer on the inside. So this will only work with this. So I went back to looking at my original flywheel, which this one's fine. I just need to scuff it up and clean it all off and shit. So I'm going to get that, uh, you know, gone back over. That one, these are all perfectly fine. So what we're realizing is that with the starter spacer, I'll show you guys up under here. See how there's a little bit of a spacing? That means that I have to use this one, or let's check this one too. Or this one. This one doesn't look like it has the spacing either. So here's the problem, right? Both of them have bad pilot bearings. I went and found the pilot bearing before, so I'm going to put a new pilot in that. And this, all of this is going to go, obviously I'm going to use the good disc, but all of that's going to go in here. And like I said, we'll clean that up. I can already see the comments screaming right now. But we'll clean all that up and then everything should work all right. But I need to go get that pilot bearing. So today is not working out because the rear seal they won't have that till tomorrow. And then I'm just waiting on all the fluid to get here for the transmission. So I won't be able to put the all this stuff back in. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get the transmission up under the truck on the jack and pushed back as far as possible. That way, tomorrow, I'm going to go grab the bearing. We'll get everything slapped in. And then we're good because I think everything is going to be t a tomorrow type deal. So... As much as it sucks, it is what it is, and we'll just we'll just have to deal with it. So then we'll get everything slapped up in, um, and then the oil leak I'll probably fix uh, today as well. I'll drain the oil, put the new thing in. I have a clean bucket here, which I'm going to clean out again because it's been sitting, but and then we'll redump everything back in, put the reverse lights in. So realistically, this thing will be running driving tomorrow, not today. All right. Both sides work. Now we got to do the mirrors yet. I'm waiting. So I got one on order. They're going to bring that today. Cool. So we'll be able to get, the, we still will be able to get the transmission in today, apparently. So I guess he said both of the wires were run down on the driver's side. So, by the way, I got it in reverse. <clears throat> just took a, uh, a thing, just put it in there. 
So I'm going to have to cut this connector off and we'll go with a, uh, we'll have to switch the connector because if you guys will see, actually I need to order a new connector or a new, uh, new switch here. I might have, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have to order a new one. Um, this connector is going to be different than this one over here, I believe. So we'll verify that. If it's not, great. If it is, I can always go get one from the other truck. All right, so we just got our first shipment. Uh, we're going to get this new sensor here. Um, that one kind of got destroyed in the crossfire. Looks like they dropped Halloween candy. I can deal with that. So we got six quarts of Pennzoil Synchro Mesh. Love this stuff. My transmission lasted 547,000 miles. And then we got the new pilot bearing. So we're going to be super careful with this one. Because I understand in my own applications, when I install stuff on my own trucks, they kind of, you know, they get a little screwed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the nice transmission jack that I bought. And that's how we're going to get this thing to go in straight. Because a lot of times I end up going in from the bottom and like straightening it up. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to have, now that it's customer stuff, we're going to make sure shit's proper and then we have a transmission jack. So what I'm going to have to do is I'll probably get it under the truck. And then I'll lift it up with ratchet straps and then I'll put that underneath of it because I'm not going to be able to pick that thing up myself. Like I got to do this all myself. So what I'll do is get it under there, lift it with some straps, under it, chain it, and then we'll lift it up and stick it in. And it should be a lot easier than the sketchy stuff like you guys saw with Josh's truck. So I'll get this installed. We'll get the clutch installed. And then that's really all I need. Oh, guys, talking about the rear main. Um, so this transmission, he has paperwork for it being rebuilt. Uh, so here's the dilemma, right? This transmission being rebuilt, the rear main was already done. Um, and, and the clutch was actually done before. So that's why the clutch looks fairly decent, but he said he did ride it pretty hard a couple of times backing up on boat ramps and stuff. So we're not going to do the rear main for that, uh, reason. It, like I said, it was just done, but that seal down there definitely needs to go. And then the, uh, washer needs replaced for the drain, which, According to these these things here, this says always change your gaskets with every oil change. I've never done it. I don't know many people that have ever done it, but apparently that's the thing. Let me know what you guys do for your oil changes. We usually just put them right back up in. I've never had one leak. This one, though, leaky. But like I said, we're going to be using this one. This is the bearing that they had for us. Uh, this is from Fishers. I think it was like SEC, S-C-E. 12 11 or some shit like that i can't remember but yeah so we'll get all that installed put up in um i'm waiting on josh he has my clutch alignment tool so he'll be here a little bit later that's the other thing i need i need the clutch alignment tool because for some reason nobody likes to buy new clutches we're always using old clutches for some reason so let me know what your guys's true opinions are we have an nv5600 here we have a g56 here now i personally like my nv5600s because of the good luck that i've had with them pulling i understand these things don't last as long synchros don't last as long cases can crack this and that under high power or high towing but i've also seen other guys who tow with these not the miles that i was putting on mine but i've seen guys tow with these and I, I'm wondering how these things actually truly hold up when you put serious miles under. Like, what's the actual mileage these things get as opposed to an NV? Does anybody have a G56 that has lasted more than, uh, I would say, half a million? That's what I want to know. Do we have any at half a million or 600,000 mile G56s? I'd say 400 horsepower and towing heavy all the time like I, I want to know like non-cdl heavy like seventeen thousand pound trailers let me know on that all right so josh brought me the clutch alignment tool i know it looks a little dinky but that's the right one so we're gonna get that installed let's make sure the shaft size that's correct so i'm gonna get that clutch installed now we can get the, we're going to stay here late until, not that one, we're going to stay here late until this one's installed. I want to be able to drive this today. Since everything did come, I want to be able to drive this today and then we'll just take the four bolts out of the trans, or the rear end tomorrow. We're just waiting on the rear seal. So I need to get a uh, puller for that that's stronger than the one I have because my puller is just not, not doing all that great. So I have not filmed in a minute. Hello. I see. I don't know if I can see down there. So we're replacing the old lift pump. He wanted uh, the better, faster one. So three lift pumps. Five came on. 
three lift pumps and 5,000 miles. Yeah, so this is, what did they What did they do to this one? That was from Power Driven Diesel. Hot rod lift pump, 95 gallons per hour. Oh, okay. Sporty. So, and then this one comes with studs, if we can see down in there. Uh, there you go, there's studs. Got the gasket on already. And... You put the spacer on? Yeah. What? Did you? Yeah, I put oh. all three together. Oh, okay. So there's a gasket, a spacer, a gasket, and then the new lift pump. Sporty. Sporty. Uh, news, uh, by the way, the trans is still not in. This thing has been fighting me all day. I broke the new trans jack, but it's okay. I fixed it, but I broke it first. Ugh. I snapped the nub off that goes down into there, so I had to put the bolt in backwards with a big washer. So that works now. We're just, uh, we're gonna get this straight, which we're close. Um, I'm gonna get it straight, and then we should be able to just plop the thing in. But yeah, trans will be in tonight. I'm just waiting on the yoke for tomorrow. I at least want, I wanted to be able to drive this tonight, but it's getting late, it's like eight o'clock. So I want to get the trans in, bolted in with the, um, with the cross member, all that stuff bolted in. Like I just, that's that's gonna be the goal tonight and then getting Josh out of here because he wants to do uh, his offered. 87th lift pump. Yeah, I did offer. I said, I said, I'll show you how to do it, you do it. I said we don't have to do it today. You guys like my custom spacer. It worked. All right, it's almost 10 o'clock at night. So I told him this time, let's spin the motor over. That way in case we installed it wrong, He's literally laying in a pile of his own fuel. That's all fuel the whole way under there because somebody decided we needed to get rid of the fuel. Oh, I loosened the crank. No, righty tighty. I loosened the crank bolt. Oopsie. Hey, I yeah, wonder I if he'll. I don't think he'll ever notice that I put a wrench here. Can you put that away from me? <laughs> Where's my 19? Yeah, I've been screwing with him, so he doesn't know all of the things that I've put under his engine bay, but he'll find out when he's going down the road and he hears it. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. He'll hear that. He'll be like, Steven, you stupid bastard. I swear in this video that that's going to run. I swear. I, I promise. Tomorrow it will run, but it'll be this video. Hopefully this runs. Are you spinning the motor? Oh yeah, I've been. Oh, and nothing broke? I guess not. Did you prime it? I primed the shit out of it. Did you? Yeah, but I... What a gay hat. Fuck you, really. At least he's not in swim trunks today. Look, he's in a real work uniform today. Oh yeah. I am ready to go home. Hey, this was your idea. This was your idea. Oh. Well, no, actually, originally it was your idea, but it was just my idea to do it tonight. See, what I like to do is I like to loosen the um, the fuel bowl, do that until it... Fuel bowl. Yeah, I know. Loosen the fuel bowl till it pisses full. <laughs> so we're going to push this outside before we start it because it's 10 at night and I don't want to piss the neighbors off. They moved in with chickens. Yes, they but really did. their chickens aren't making noise right now. We are. I'm a very courteous person. Are you? I sleep during the I'm going to get some dickhead in the comments that's going to be like, You courteous? Oh my goodness. I'm going to be like... Oh, that is taking a lot of priming. Oh, it will. Maybe if you uh, cracked the fuel bowl like I told you to. No. Or had an electric fuel pump, like a Ooh, FAS. Start putting tools away, boy. I've asked him to get a fast for the longest time, and he keeps just buying these electric fuel or these mechanical fuel pumps. Hot rod lift pump. Good enough. Fast gets rid of the air and the water. This just creates pressure. No, I'm just watching you work. I'm done for the day. I've been at work since eight o'clock this morning. It's ten o'clock. I spent most of the day waiting on parts on this thing. Ladies, he's available. That's fuel. That's fuel. That's fuel. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All this is going to get cleaned up before we leave. So yeah, he's going to take my advice. Loosen the fuel wool. We'll, uh... We could always put compressed air into the fuel tank. If it wasn't so late, I'd just pressurize the fuel tank. 
Can't do that until it starts spitting out at you. Oh, he got it started. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love the sound of a 12 valve. Oh my god, you changed fuel filter? I don't want to start. I think it wants to die. Oh, now it's going to stay running. Alright, it is the next day. I got the seal, I got meatloaf, and I got the reverse sensor. I think I threw it back in there. Oh, there it is. And I got the reverse light sensor. So I'll just put some RTV around that since they didn't give me a gasket. And I also went and bought another jack. Little husky guy. I think it was like 190 bucks, something like that. It's a low pro. Um, he has a snap-on jack. And the reason I'm not getting a snap-on jack is because this thing's bent. You can see that wheel's up in the air. Oh, so you can see overnight. It loses pressure. So what I'm going to do... What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that jack in the back, and this one, we're not all the way in. Um, I did get the cross member up, but that's about it. I have never had a transmission fight me like this one. So we're going to get that thrown in real quick. I went home last night just covered in oil grease and metal shavings. For this to work, I had to go and, you can see up in there, I had to notch that little nub out. It actually broke the bottom of the, the trans jack, that guy there, so I had to bolt it in from the top. So that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to try to find a bolt that I can do from the bottom, but I'm going to get this guy out. Then we'll have two jacks. All right, new jack. I wanted to make sure to get something somewhat decently long, but also low profile. So if I put these guys next to each other, like the snap-on one's definitely longer, but... I don't know, I just, I wonder if, if that's bolted from the bottom or does that come out? No, that's bolted. Okay, cool. So this one just slides out. Like I said, I had to, uh, you guys will see here how there's like a flat spot. That's standard. So what they do, put the flat spot there and twist it so it wouldn't come out. Well, I grinded that out so that we could use the trans jack properly. So um, probably what I'm going to do is clean up the mess underneath the truck and start fresh because I do not feel like laying in metal shavings today. I'm just going to get all my tools out, all that stuff, and we'll go from there. All right, you guys can see transmission is in. I just need to go grab the other hydraulics because, well, actually, this hydraulic might, I believe this one might work. You know what, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try out these hydraulics because the other ones are just stock too. I'm going to plug in the hydraulics real quick. I just got the sensor right there all plugged in. And then we just need to put the drive shaft up in. I want to get the drive shaft up in, make sure everything fits, and I'll just set it off to the side. Um, I want to get everything done, and then we'll tackle the rear end. Just in case I can't get the rear end done, at least it'll be ready to put up in. So i got to fill this thing up with fluid, put this guy in, and also I will have to splice in the other connector because I just definitely won't fit in this one so I'm gonna go get the other harness and splice them in all right hydraulics work push clutch in push push out so that means I didn't need to worry the only difference it looks like between this one and that one this one comes kind of straight in and then this one I guess that's the same on the firewall but this one comes straight in, whereas the other one kind of like 90s it, which is a lot nicer. Um, forget where I got this one. I think the other one's a metal line too. So, like I said, all this stuff, um, like this, well, I'm going to pull it out of the other truck. So, like, that's going to go with it. This goes with it. All that's going to go with the uh, G56, so it can be a complete swap. All that stuff. I don't know if my camera was even facing the shit when I was talking to it. Something to keep in mind here. I was going to, I I saw this ripped when i originally pulled this out and i was like oh no big deal we're doing it you know we're g50 or we're nv swapping it and i'm like i'll just use my other boot well if you look 
at the bolt holes on an NV5600 floor. See the difference there? And then you look at the difference on this one. Two different bolt holes. Now I know, you know, I could go through and drill out all the holes and stuff, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to try to get this thing replaced. But like I said, the plan was to use that one. That's why I didn't think anything of it. All right. So we finally, oh, shit. Finally got the seal out. Hammer and a screwdriver. Best way to do it, I guess. Just know you're going to leak fluid. Had I known this was leaking prior, I would have not filled it with fluid. But it's full of fluid, so drain that out and then we'll refill it. We'll get the new seal in. That's what we got here. So we'll get the new seal in. And then, oh man, I don't know if that's going to seal. Yeah, that's why it's leaking right there. That thing's worn to shit. Oh. See this crap? This is Chevy great engineering. It's all clean now. So I don't know how long this video is at this point, but I, I'm going to I'm gonna cut it out right here. Uh, that way, just to be able to get you guys the content for tomorrow. But this truck here will be done 100% tomorrow. He keeps adding more and more stuff, which I'm fine with, perfectly fine with. But they came out pretty good. So that's all clean. We're good there. Um, we'll get that thrown in in the morning. I'm going to let that drain overnight into the bucket. And then uh, drive shaft, wire in the new reverse sensor. We need to get the reverse lights wired in on there. And then he bought the side steps from the black truck, which I wasn't planning on selling. I was going to crush them with the truck, to be honest. But who knows? Uh, the black truck is now a shell. And you guys either won't see it or won't like won't see it for a while or you'll the next time you'll see it it'll be crushed and destroyed so i don't know all i got left is the shell from that but i got rid of the front bumper that was on the the black truck as well the uh the the ranch hand the one that had the top cut off i got rid of that as well so a lot of that stuff's just gonna get crushed i don't even don't want it don't want anything to do with it but this thing will be done if you guys have anything else uh for me let me know like I said, uh, I, I had to leave today. This would have been done today, but I had to leave because I went and sold the the Chevy. So that's gone. So let me know what you guys think. Send me a message, centralpalogistics at gmail.com. Uh, like I said, we'll get the LLC started for the shop here at some point, maybe this year. <gasps> and we'll go from there. So keep uh, keep bringing stuff in and yeah, we'll we'll keep working. So we're shooting for another record year financially and then... Now that uh, everything is, we are no longer worried. Now that we're no longer held back financially, we can do a lot more stuff. So it kind of makes it better. I, I'll be able to start investing in shit. Uh, maybe be able to buy a truck, hopefully in cash, because I don't really have credit right now. Um, and other than that, go check out the links in the description. I just updated some. So I did start a Rumble account. So I will be posting some of the content that I do over here. I'll probably be double posting it and posting it over there as well. On top of Mudflap down in the description. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video.